Go Honzon. Namo Myoho Renge Kyo, Namo Myoho Renge Kyo, Namo Myoho Renge Kyo. Hi friends, thank you for being here. I hope this finds you in good health and secure. Buddhism Reference, Volumes 1 and 2. This book, I think, is an essential to have right near your altar uh, at hand, in a bookshelf off to one side or something, to help you as you study, as you consider, as you read Gosho or The Lotus. Right off the bat, I'm going to challenge with this definition many groups and sects who have misinterpreted and misused this term ad nauseum. Go Hanzon is a verb, not a noun. That behind me, that's a mandala, not a Gohanzon. Gohanzon is an act. It's a mental act. Remember I've said ad nauseum, Buddhism is about attitude and intent. Gohanzon is that magic door. I shouldn't use the word magic, but it is a mental portal. It is the, the synonym of Shakyamuni's statements of the Buddha eye. Right? How do you open the Buddha eye? You move the lid, the eyelid. Okay? That action of opening the eyelid, that's Gohonzon. Let's get into it. One, the experience of the engine of life. Now, if you haven't looked up engine of life in this book yet, you don't really understand it. You've heard me use that term many, many times. The second, the realized mind state, the action of the eye of buddhaness. That's Gohonzon. Number three, the ultimate objective of Buddhist practice to invoke the innate Buddha eye. That's Gohonzon. Not the object the objective, hmm? mistranslated constantly. Fourth, the witness or I of Buddhaness. It is, if you will, if this makes it easier to understand, that transmigratory shift from samsara and possession and, and ownership of everything identified in the worldly realm of form to the mind, that paradigm shift. Let's give it another word, Gohonzon, to Buddhaness, where everything is current, happening, in motion, moving. Nothing standing still, no stasis anywhere. Stasis is in the mind. Stasis is empty. Hmm? The sentient mind of ordinary mortal beings immersed fully in the flow of momentum. The opening of the Buddha eye to witness this momentum from the formations of life, see karma, unencumbered and experiencing all potential in each moment-to-moment -moment manifestation of existence. I mean, I talk about this in, in almost every video in some form. So does Shakyamuni, so does Nichiren. How this term gets misunderstood really frustrates me. This active, open state of mind, Guhonzon, aware of one's own manifestation of energies expressed moment to moment in concert with all phenomena, in one's environment, Buddhaness. Unseparated, undifferentiated, at the core of our existence, we can realize our own making as a flow of karmic expression. 
C, engine of life. In this following quote from a translation of Bodhisattva Nichiren's essay on the Gohanzan, it is described as follows. This is Nichiren speaking now. The objective of devotion for observing the mind established in the fifth 500-year period after the thus come one's passing. That Gosho. Nichiren, the Shramana of Japan. Volume 5 of Great Concentration and Insight states, you know who, who's uh, writing that is, right? G.E. Tendai? Hmm? Quote, life at each moment is endowed with the ten worlds or realms, yes? At the same time, each of the ten worlds is endowed with all ten worlds, right? The interpenetration of the ten worlds. I'm sure you've studied the ten worlds or realms, so that an entity of life actually possesses 100 worlds or realms, potentials. Each of these worlds, in turn, possesses 30 realms, which means that the 100 worlds, there are 3,000 realms. The 3,000 realms of existence are all possessed by life in a single moment. In other words, this is a, a breakdown of potential in its various avenues of realization, of formations. If there is no life, that's the end of the matter. But if there is the slightest bit of life, it contains all the 3,000 realms, so on and so forth. This is what we mean when we speak of the region of the unfathomable, end quote. So, I add to that, note 3,000 realms might also read 3,000 factors. But the number is the same. The only difference lies in the method of expansion. Another copy of the Great Concentration and Insight states, each world is endowed with the three realms of existence. Question. Oh, this is still the go show, my, my bad. Is the principle of the 3,000 realms in a single moment of life explained in the profound meaning of the Lotus Sutra? Another, uh, I have that book, um, uh, another writing of Chi G. Answer, Miao Lo says that it is not. Question, then is it explained in the words and phrases of the Lotus Sutra? Another writing of Z. Answer, Miao Lo states that it is not. Miao Lo comes much later in China, and so that's why Nichiren is using Miao Lo to indicate that the scholarship since Tindai, or Zi's passing, uh, even later than Zhang An, states that this 3,000 realms concept is only in concentration and insight. Question, what are his exact words? Answer, he says, quote, none of them reveal that a single moment of life contains the 3,000 realms, end quote. Question, is this principle mentioned in any of the first four volumes of Great Concentration and Insight? No, it is not. What proof is there of this? Answer, Miao Lo says, quote, when at last he revealed the method of meditation and great concentration and insight, he at the same time employed the 3,000 realms as a way to understand. Now, I've talked about this quite a lot. I have a, an entire book written on the 3,000 realms, right? It's available as an ebook on threefoldos.com. Also available as a print book, I believe. So, moving on. This is one of the many such descriptions of the experience of the treasure tower from the Lotus Sutra. This story illustrates the tower as an apparition or a mental conjuring. So it's obvious to draw a line between Nichiren's mandala and these <laughs> statements, right? Offered by Nichiren to have us understand the nature of the Gohonzon mind and its ability to afford us a complete shift in our experience of the realms of potential constantly remanifesting in each moment of thought. Thought, 
being of the sentient mind, is the sight of the Gohonzon and the experience of Buddha or Buddhaness. Tying it all together for you, yeah? And yet, in the face of all this scholarship offered throughout hundreds of years of Bodhisattva discussion, still we find today an incredible number of deluded people claiming the Gohonzon to be a piece of paper, a scroll, or a statue. How egregious. How could any person study the words of Nichiren, let alone the words of Shakyamuni, and come to the conclusion that a piece of paper is all that is needed for enlightenment? Duh! These are people who don't understand the meaning of all these words. They want to ascribe magical, mystical properties to things. It's a way to avoid taking responsibility. You instantiate Buddha. You don't derive it from anything. When you chant, you invoke your Buddha. You open that Gohonzon mind like lifting the lid off the Buddha eye and perceive for yourself, by yourself. Nobody hands you this ability. Bodhisattvas are at work all the time trying to direct you toward it, just like a trainer teaches uh, a track star how to run and exercise properly to be the most efficient and most uh, uh, improved or incrementally uh, improved, safe, healthy, and achieve their highest potential, right? Bodhisattvas are like Buddha coaches, Also, and most conclusively, Nietzsche repeatedly wrote this following exhortation to his students and inner circle as the Gosho, the real aspect of the Gohonzon, quote, never seek this Gohonzon outside yourself. The Gohonzon exists only within the mortal flesh of us ordinary people who embrace the Lotus Sutra and chant Namu Myoho Renge Kyo. The guy who created this mandala is telling you that the mandala ain't it. It's a tool to help you derive your Gohonzon mind, activate it to open your Buddha eye. It's a mind, a mental process. He continues, the body is the place of the ninth consciousness, the Gohonzon mind. The unchanging reality that reigns over all of life's function. This Buddha awareness, this Buddha-ness, the engine of life and the experience, the knowledge, the seeing of it, is Buddhaness. And a rock to a tree to a frog to a house to you and I are all the product of the same process occurring right now in momentum into the next moment. Hmm? Just as waking up from a deep sleep and dream state requires only the waking opening of our eyes, so too does Nietzsche spend a great number of words in his treatise on the opening of the eyes, describing this very process of awakening and identification of this process as itself the Gohonzon, Gohonzon or the objective of our practice. Well, I've probably talked about this before, I don't know, I've probably covered this term before, but I just don't think I can talk about it enough because people still struggle with this. Yeah, I already have a video on this, but uh, oh well. So now I have a second one. <laughs> All right, well, I hope this has been helpful. 
I gotta mark off those ones that I just did. I guess the next one will be Hiniana. We'll talk about Hiniana. A lot of people misunderstand or take exception to that term, but there's a reason for it, and we'll go over that in the next video. In the meantime, please take care of your health, savor your practice, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for your support. We couldn't be here without it.